Hi everyone, this is Kevin Anderson, Clinical Education Specialist here at Healthmark Industries, and today I'm going to talk to you about Sonocheck. The Sonocheck comes in a package of 30, just like this box you see here. Uh, it looks like a very small medicine vial. It's filled with green liquid and glass beads, and each of these tests is single use. So what is Sonocheck specifically? It is a test for cavitation. So you might have heard in standards and guidelines that you have to test your ultrasonic cleaner each day that it's used uh, for cavitation. That is what this test is designed to detect very specifically. There's no other factors. And what you'll do is you'll put simple vials like this into your uh, ultrasonic cleaner. You run your cycle and you'll hopefully uh, see a color change from this green to a nice yellow, bright yellow color at the end. So I want to get into a really important part uh, before we go on with showing you how to use this test, and that is why is Sonocheck important? Uh, I think this is really important because uh, Sonocheck, we, we mentioned that it tests specifically for cavitation. And what we find uh, when we go and we visit departments, people are generally already testing their ultrasonic machines. But Understanding what they're testing or why they're testing is just as important. This test being specific for cavitation uh, is different. That's a unique thing about this. Whereas what we see typically when we go around to departments, we see a lot of times people are using soil removal tests in their ultrasonic cleaner. Now, I want to mention now that that is not necessarily a bad thing. Your ultrasonic cleaner should remove soils. But what makes an ultrasonic cleaner unique to a washer disinfector or even just your manual cleaning process is the fact that it produces cavitation. So that is why we want to make sure that this uh, ultrasonic cleaner here or the ones in your department, that they're actually producing that cavitation because you can remove some soil just by virtue of soaking the instruments. We want to make sure there's cavitation because cavitation is what gets into all the little nooks and crannies in the instruments that are really hard to reach with your brush and your manual process. Sometimes it's even hard to reach with your washer disinfector. So that's what's so great about an ultrasonic cleaner and we want to make it easy for you to determine that this thing is working properly. So it's important to understand where support for running tests like this comes from. Uh, you can find an ANSI Amy ST79. Uh, there are recommendations that we test our ultrasonic cleaner each day that it's in use. And what are we going to test for? We're going to test for all the critical parameters, but one of those critical parameters is cavitation. And so we recommend that you use a Sonocheck to test for cavitation each day that your ultrasonic cleaner is in use. In addition to ANSI Amy ST79, you will find the same support in the AORN guidelines as well as the Joint Commission as their standard states that all medical equipment must be maintained, tested, and inspected. All right, so before we get into the how to actually use this test in your department, remember that you know, before you go and perform these tests in your ultrasonic cleaner that you're going to be in your decontam area and we recommend that you wear the proper PPE. All right, so before we start putting the tests in the tank, there's a couple things that you may have to do. Uh, one of them is if you have an older ultrasonic model, you may actually have to run a degas cycle. So before you run the test, run your degas cycle. If you have a newer model of ultrasonic cleaner, that has sort of that integrated degassing cycle in their regular test cycle, then you can by all means get right to uh, the next step, which is to check your IFU and identify how big of a tank uh, your ultrasonic cleaner has. This one right here, according to our IFU for Sonocheck, is what we would call a large tank. All right, so in this tank, we, for regular performance qualification, daily testing, we are going to recommend that you put three Sonocheck tests in there. Now, the bottom of this tank has nice wire basket inside, and we're gonna put a hook onto our Sonocheck test to make sure that it doesn't move around while the ultrasonic uh, cycle is in process. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those in there. Uh, one's gonna go on the far side, one's gonna go in the middle, and then the last one will go 
closest to me on the near side. And at that point, we're just going to test our normal test cycle or our normal instrument cycle, whatever the uh, cycle is that's the shortest that you use for your instruments. That is the one that we recommend testing. All right, so our cycle is now complete and it's time to check our sonal check whether or not it passed. So on this model, I have to lift the lid on your model. Hopefully you have an automated lid, but uh, I lifted it up and I'm already seeing that I have some yellow sonal check tests in here and these uh, yellow colors are indicator that the ultrasonic did produce cavitation, so it passed the test. So when you go to your documentation, uh, because you got to document what you're doing every single day, uh, make sure that you document that it passed the test. Now, it is possible when you uh, go to check your test that you might see ones that have various levels of green or blue color in them and those would be considered a fail. Now, in rare circumstances, it is possible to get a sonal check that is completely clear. There's no yellow, no green, no blue, any of that. That is considered a passing result. It does happen on occasion when your ultrasonic cleaner has really powerful cavitation, uh, but it is worth mentioning that you could have a clear uh, vial, and it is in the IFU as well. Now, many of you out there will have ultrasonic cleaners now that are much larger. Uh, many of them are vertically stacking trays inside the ultrasonic cleaner. So I want to address that really quickly. Uh, you saw in here how we loaded the ultrasonics kind of like on a horizontal plane because it's just one large tank. On those vertical stacking tanks, we're going to kind of do the same concept, but we're going to put our sonal checks uh, from top to bottom or bottom to top, however you want to think about it. And we're going to use uh, the trays that, are, are, that come as a part of that ultrasonic cleaner. This is just one example. You can see the large holes at the bottom of the tray. We're not going to be able to just set a sonal check in there. It will fall. So what I want to show you is that you can do a couple of different things. Uh, you can take your sonal check. You can put the hook on there. And if you have a basket like this, you can put right there in the basket and then inside this ultrasonic tray. Uh, if that doesn't work, if, say if your basket that you have doesn't fit properly in there, you might use something more like this. This you still can hook your sonal check to really nicely and it will sit at the bottom of that tray and then you will just do one per tray uh, for each level. Up to this point in the video, we've been talking about the steps on how to perform performance qualification testing, or PQ. That's something that we're going to do every single day that we use the equipment. I want to quickly touch on installation qualification, or IQ, and operational qualification, or OQ. Uh, for that, we're basically doing the same thing, except we're using more sonal checks. We're going to get a more thorough picture of the cavitation throughout the, the basin of the ultrasonic. Now, why would we do that? Well, we're doing that after we install the equipment. So that would be the IQ part. And we want to make sure everything is working properly throughout the entire tank. And then we'll do that again. Uh, it's an OQ, operational qualification test, after major repairs. And again, we're going to use a lot more sonal checks. Uh, in this example, we have this tabletop one. It's still considered a large tank. We would follow the IFU as always, uh, but according to the IFU, we would use these 12 sonal checks and spread them out throughout the bottom of the tank. So when you run a sonal check test on your ultrasonic cleaner, there is always that option that it doesn't pass the test. And then we have to get into the troubleshooting portion of what do we do next? You know, can we use this equipment? Um, is there anything we can do on site to figure out if we can get the ultrasonic cleaner to run the test and pass the test? Or do we need to just go right to calling the service technician? Those are the kinds of things that we have to work out. And I just want to get into a, a few of the quick uh, troubleshooting tips that we can cover here. All right, so one common troubleshooting thing that we see that you could do right in your department is simply the degassing cycle. If you do have one of those 
uh, ultrasonic cleaners that still require a degas cycle to be run prior to running an instrument cycle, make sure that you do that first. One of the things that we see is many departments don't have standard equipment. So you might have one that's like that and one that does it automatically. So there's that room for error and forgetting to run the degas cycle. So that's one. Another one would be time. So our cycle time matters a great deal when it comes to cavitation. Many of us have uh, little ultrasonic cleaners or even big ones, but sometimes the time is just not enough. Like we wanna get instruments through the cleaning process and I understand that, but generally speaking, a lot of ultrasonics out there still have like five minute cycle times. And that in many cases is just too short. You might have to up it to 10 minutes. You might have to up it to 15 or what have you. It depends on the model. But I wanted to draw that to your attention in case you have a, a, a cycle uh, selection where you can actually change the time really easily while you're there in the department. A couple things that I want to mention that you'll probably have to get clinical engineering or biomedical engineering, your repair technicians in on. Uh, this is something you may be able to have access to, you may not. Uh, but another thing to check is the actual generator. The generator is usually housed inside the unit and you have to open a service door or a service panel that's screwed on, that kind of thing. Uh, sometimes it's accessible to you as the frontline technician and sometimes it's not. Uh, but the generator can be sometimes switched off. It has its own switch and we've actually seen where we've seen failed sonal checks and the generator itself was just turned off. Someone probably did service on it, had to turn the generator off and then forgot to turn it back on. So that's another thing to look at. Another one is the transducers. And again, most of the time, those are gonna be hidden behind closed service panels and things like that. But we have seen instances where transducers have actually dislodged from the tank altogether and then they fail the sonal check test. But it's something to be aware of so that you have a, an idea of how you're gonna go about the troubleshooting process. And that should help get you started at least. And if there's any other things, we also have troubleshooting guides that you can post on your wall or even online in case you lose them. Uh, but we have ways of helping you get through that process. And if you ever have um, more trouble than that, you're always welcome to reach out and contact us at Healthmark. So a couple last things before we wrap up. Uh, when it comes to uh, performing sonal check tests on your ultrasonic cleaner, we always want to encourage that you document your results. If you already have documentation available, go ahead and use that. If you do not, we wanna make sure you're aware on hmark.com, our website, you can get a free downloadable printout of a log where you can document the results of your tests. A second thing I wanna mention is that when it comes to discarding the vials, the Sonocheck vials, you're welcome to follow your institutional policy or you can reference RIFU if you don't have a policy which states to discard the vial in the biohazard container. For more information on the Sonocheck, please visit our website, hmark.com, or you can reach out to your local Healthmark representative.